God bless everyone and welcome to my channel. Well, I'll be sharing many powerful testimonies that will help us understand how the spirit realm works. And these include interviews with ex-witches, ex-Satanists, as well as people who saw heaven and hell. And today I have a very special guest with me. His name is Jordan Ward, and he has a shocking hell testimony that everyone needs to hear. So I ask you to please give this video a like, subscribe, and share it with others. It not only helps our small channel grow, but more importantly, it helps us win more souls for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And having said all that, let's get into it. Brother Jordan, welcome to the channel. Hello, God bless you. Thank you so much for uh, having me on here. Hey, Amen. It's a pleasure. Well, I've, let's just get into it. I'm really anxious to hear about your experience, so I'll let you take over. Absolutely. Yeah, so I'll just get straight into it. My name is Jordan Ward. Um, I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. And growing up, I didn't really know too, too much about God. You know, my parents, you know, had us pray during meals and everything, but they didn't start going to church until I was around maybe 12, 13 years old. And um, even at that church, I didn't really know much about the Lord. And eventually I just decided, you know what? This is boring. I don't know what's going on. And I pretty much stopped going. And once I got to high school, basically like my whole life, I had been playing basketball, traveling around, going to nationals uh, every weekend, going to different states to play. And when I got in high school, I broke my ankle in two places and it was really, really bad. And I wasn't going to be able to play that season. And I, they wanted me on the team. So I was going to all the practices and everything. I decided, man, I'm burnt out and I'm not able to play. I'm going to just, you know, quit for this year. And what wound up happening is I wanted to experience something new. I wanted to, you know, venture out and do different things. And I remember one day specifically wanting to encounter something supernatural. And that's when I started doing more research on drugs. And I decided one day, you know, to hit up my friend. And we decided to go and smoke. And we started smoking and then it just kept leading to more and more things and I had the love of money ever since I was young so when I was about middle school age I started scamming people doing all these things and that led me to now start selling drugs to feed that habit and that love for money just kept growing until eventually I was one of the biggest if not the biggest drug dealers at my school and I started making music, started to get deeper and deeper into that. And as I kept going down this, this rabbit hole of the lies of the enemy, I started to really get into spirituality and different things about witchcraft because of the music and the people who I was listening to. And it started to get really, really bad to the point where I was listening to music, looking back on it now, where I was actually speaking spells and curses over my life and these things were causing me to hear voices to to have different crazy things happening to me even when i wasn't on drugs or anything like that and it brought me to this place of extreme anxiety and i remember having like witchcraft symbols uh written out in my room and i started to feel like evil presences to the point where i was like you know what maybe this is wrong and i threw them away but anyways I moved to Hollywood with my friend, and I was still doing the same stuff, clubbing, robbing, waking up in hospital beds in Beverly Hills, and I decided to move back to Indianapolis, where I'm from. I moved back into my parents' house, and I went over to my friends one day. I was still doing the same things, and I went over. I was doing drugs with them, sitting on the couch, and all of a sudden, I began to feel this weight come over me. And it felt like something was coming to entrap me or to take me to prison. And I was so confused. I was like, there's no police coming. I know no one's coming to get me. And I remember telling my friend, like, yo, I don't know why I feel this way. I know there's no cops, nothing. And I got up. And for some reason, I felt this, like, conviction come over me and this fear. And... Looking back on it, it may have been some sort of the fear of God to an extent, but it was kind of funny at the same time looking back because I got convicted of something that seemed so little compared to all the other things I was doing. But I started to tell my friend, man, maybe we shouldn't curse in our music anymore. Maybe we should change our music up. 
even though I had been robbing people, doing other things. And I went outside and I just feel this weight get stronger and stronger. Like whatever is coming to imprison me or trap me is getting closer and closer. And as this was happening, for whatever reason, all I could think about was Jesus. And I just kept saying, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. But I didn't know God. I didn't know Jesus. I didn't love Jesus. But for some reason, I knew that I needed him. And it was almost like, felt like I was looking for a door. I was looking for a way out of whatever was coming for me. And for some reason, my spirit, my my mind knew that it was Jesus. So all of a sudden, I can only explain it as feeling like a movie. It was like everything paused, everything stopped as this weight came over me. And it was like, it's over. Like, I can't get away from whatever it was. I stopped in the middle of the street. And I don't know if I overdosed. I don't know if I passed out and went to a vision. I don't know. But all of a sudden, I fell in the middle of the street. And I was in this tunnel full of thorns. Someone asked me the other day, was I awake? And I believe I was more awake than what I am right now in that place. And I was being dragged through this tunnel and my flesh felt like it was ripping over and over again. So I did have this sort of body, even though I was in this place. And it was ripping over and over again. It was the worst pain I ever felt. And it kept getting worse and worse, tighter and tighter. And I heard this voice speak to me and say to me, this is what God wants for you. This is what Jesus wants for you, lying to me, trying to pervert God to me and make me feel as though this is what God wants for everyone. This is the purpose of, of life for us to die and go here. And I didn't want to believe that. And it kept getting worse. And one of the worst things was I didn't know if it was going to end. The moment that I got in that place, I felt eternity. Like I I knew like I was an eternal being. Like I felt that weight of, you know, wherever I'm going to be, I'm going to be there forever. And I didn't know when it was going to end, and it felt like days went by in that place, and I got taken, and all of a sudden, I'm in this uh, very dark just space. It felt like, it looked like almost just like it was space, except there's no light there, and I was just stuck there, and it was like my muscles were like clenched up, my body was clenched up, and I was just shaking, and my teeth were just clashing against each other, and I was just feeling terrible. And I'm hearing the same voice torment me and tell me, this is what God wants for you. This is what Jesus wants for you. But I didn't want to believe it. Eventually, I got brought down very low. I felt the weight of myself going lower. And that was after what felt like days in that place as well. And all of a sudden, it's like, it felt like something was with me. But I'm like hovering, I'm looking over this city. And this city is divided. It's like there's a fence or wall, and then there's two sides, but both sides were going through torment. And all of a sudden, I look outside of the city, and I see this group of people around in like a circle. And these weren't just humans. These weren't normal people. They were like tall, like skinny, thin, dark figures. And it looked very demonic, but they were chanting. And these chants that they were doing were sounding like the music that I was listening to, some of the people who did witchcraft, the people who were doing these voodoo type stuff in their music, it sounded like that. And I knew some of the artists that I had listened to actually spoke in demonic tongues because I had heard it. And also like they had music called like spoken in tongues and different things like that. But anyways, in that moment, it actually felt as though I was at a place of decision. It felt as though I knew too much like spiritually to just deny God. Because it's like, if I've encountered this, then that means that there's a God. And in that moment, it felt as though I like cried out to God out of my spirit. And immediately I was taken up and I was in this huge room. And it was like dark, but like velvety at the same time. And all of a sudden, I just feel this love overflowing me like waves, like so extensive. I don't even know how to explain how, what I felt there. That amount of love was just overflowing through my entire existence, through my entire body. And then 
in that moment, I felt like I was at home. I felt almost as if I had been there before. And I heard a voice say, I love you. And I immediately knew that I was with my father and that my father was God. I knew that. I just knew it. And then I hear of that same voice tell me that I'm going to be reborn. And I'm thinking, what does that mean? Like, am I going to come back as a baby? Like, what does that mean? Like, I didn't know the Bible like that. I didn't know that was in, in the scriptures. And then I hear that same voice tell me to go and live perfect. And, um, you know, how could anyone live perfect? And so I didn't know that was in the in the word as well. And then all of a sudden, he shows me this vision of my dad while I'm there. I begin to cry and weep and say, I love my dad. I love my dad. I love my dad. Even though, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in this place, God is wanting to deal with me about my dad and having bitterness and stuff in my heart. And the love of God overtook me. And then that vision went away. And all of a sudden, God began to tell me that he had these wonderful plans for me. And I began to get excited. And I knew in that place that there were certain things that I wouldn't be able to remember. I just knew while I was there that there were some things I wouldn't be able to remember. But I remember being like a child, just so excited to just go and do what he wanted me to do. I didn't have any chance to say, hey, I want to stay here, anything like some people's testimonies. But I knew God had a purpose for me to go back to the earth, go back to my body. And all of a sudden I woke up and I was in an ambulance. Now, at that time, I had no idea I was in an ambulance. I didn't figure that out until months later. But I was in an ambulance and all of a sudden I'm seeing this vision before me. And I see these people singing in heaven. Now, there's many different things that while I was in uh, what I believe was hell that the devil was trying to lie to me about. And one of those things was about God sending specific races to hell, sending black people to hell and all these things, trying to pervert God to me. But all of a sudden I'm seeing this vision in this ambulance of African people singing in heaven and other people singing in heaven. It would flash through different people. And then all of a sudden I hear a strong voice come to me as this vision goes away. Sing, my son. Sing, my son. And I begin to sing out like the loudest, like most heart filled I've ever sang in my life. And I don't know what I was saying. I don't remember what I was singing at all, but I was singing. And then I just, boom, I kind of come to myself, but not fully. And I just begin to say, oh my goodness, heaven is real. Heaven is real. Heaven is real. And there's two people I realized next to me. And I don't know if it was angels. I don't know if it was the ambulance people, but they begin to say, yes, yes, heaven is real. Heaven is real. And um, I began to think about someone I was with at the time. And I thought at that moment, because I couldn't even like feel my body. I was still feeling that peace and that river of God so strongly. I thought that I was in heaven. And I thought if I'm in heaven, I can go anywhere. And I began to try and leave. And I felt myself like go like out from my body. And then boom, I just passed out. And all of a sudden, I was in a hospital bed. I woke up. And that morning, or I don't even know if it was morning, if it was daytime, my mom came and picked me up. And I just knew I needed to remember exactly what happened to me. And I remember writing down in the car, like, Jesus is real. Heaven is real. And I knew that that experience, what I had was more real than this life right now. So when I went back home, I began to meditate, to think on all of these things. And I didn't immediately change. It's a crazy thing. I was still doing drugs, still selling stuff, but it's it marked me in that moment. And I think it was about two weeks later after thinking about all these things, that I think I came across a video. I believe that that's what happened. And all of a sudden, conviction hit me strongly for my sins. And I realized that I would go to hell if I didn't repent. And I got on my knees and I called out to Jesus. And this is where the love of God overtook me again. And I felt that same love, just not in that extreme, like, not in the same uh, abundance as what I felt there, but I felt an abundance of love come over me and it was that same love overflow me. And in that moment, it felt like chains fell off of me. 
And I got off the floor being a new man and I lost every addiction I had. At that time, I was addicted to drugs that was causing me to lose weeks in my memory. I never touched it again. And the voices that I was hearing in my head, I would walk down the street, hear voices, give me anxiety, all these things. Those voices left me in that moment. And from that moment forth, I've been following God. I didn't have you know, the most boldness. So I went online. I started telling people about Jesus. And so eventually God called me out as a missionary to go and travel around the world and tell people about the Lord. And now I'm here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, just doing the Lord's work. But God is so good. He's so good. Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing that powerful testimony. I am so glad that we have testimonies like yours now to show other people that it is a real place. And we have the choice as to where we end up as far as our eternal destination. And I encourage everybody who's watching this video to choose Jesus. I pray that the Lord blesses you and your ministry and your family and that he keeps using you as an instrument to bring his light all over the world. Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. So thank you so much, Brother Jordan. It was an honor to have you here. And I will leave your information in the description in case viewers want to reach you. And to all the viewers watching, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and share it. And I also want to invite everyone to join a special one-year fasting chain that I'm organizing, where I'll be fasting and praying every day during 2024 for God to answer all petitions that people send to this ministry. So I urge you to write down your petitions in the comments below, or you can email them to me at authorjosuegutierrez at gmail.com. And I'll leave more details in the comment section of this video in case anybody wants to join. God bless everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.